Hey heathens, welcome back to my responses to Sister Wives. I'm on episode five, season one. And hi, if you're new here, my name's Ben. I grew up on a Mormon polygamous compound and now I'm a comic out here in the wicked world, just crushing it with you guys. I'm one of the many nephews of the Sister Wives and I've been watching that show for the first time, responding to it here on TikTok. Before I get started, I just wanna let you know that I did just launch my subscriber um, packages here on TikTok. So if you wanna become a subscriber, you don't have to, but if you want to, that's a great way to support me and help me uh, create more content and pay for the therapy that I desperately need. It also gives you access to cool things like these uh, subscriber stickers, which is fun, and uh, subscriber lives. We're gonna be going live tomorrow july 7th as i watch the finale so if you want to watch those live watch those episodes with me and the lives um you can be a become a subscriber anyway back to the episode this episode was mostly about uh cody and mary's 20th anniversary the quote of the episode comes from C christine <laughs> when she says when we look back we do wonder what she saw in him <laughs> which is such a sick burn and I think foreshadowing of what's coming later. In this episode, uh, all of the wives go to buy a clotta ring for uh, Robin, which is like, I guess, a, a, a family symbol. It It's really weird to me that there are a lot of rings being given out in this uh, season, uh, but none of them actually come from Cody. So in episode one, Cody gives Robin, I guess this is her engagement ring, although I didn't catch that, um, Which, but it was like a thread ring from his daughter like his daughter made a little ring out of string and Cody gave it to her. And then the wives are going to get Robin a ring. Does Cody give her anything? But not to totally bag on Cody, I also want to mention that I'm really impressed and uh, pleased with him coaching Mariah to go to public school in this episode. That is not something that would have happened in my family. That's one of the reasons why I call Cody my liberal uncle, which I know makes some of you laugh, but like that is very outside the norm for polygamist uh, dads to even be encouraging their daughters to get an education beyond just like a public school education. My dad would never, ever have encouraged any of his children to go to public school, and he definitely would never have encouraged, encouraged his daughter to go to medical school. And despite Cody's faults, I think that one of the reasons why so many of his children, in fact, I think almost all of his children, have felt okay to opt out of that lifestyle is because of the freedom that he did give them. Which was not my experience even in another just part of the family and is definitely not the experience for a lot of polygamous children. Now on to the anniversary, which was just tragic. That, it was so obvious that Mary was just not into it. She just looked so, like there was this burdened sigh when they sat down to dinner and it was just tragic. It was really hard to watch. Um, that she's like self gaslighting herself kind of bagging on monogamous marriages like yeah mono all marriages have even monogamous marriages have ups and downs and i'm just like yeah they do monogamous marriages do have ups and downs but they don't have your hubby falling in love with other women in front of you and while that's happening they also don't involve a worldview that tells you to mistrust and ignore your feelings of jealousy and rage which are telling you there's something wrong it's interesting to me how much talk there is in the uh, show about ignoring jealousy, ignoring jealousy, overcoming jealousy, overcoming this anger. When I, I really think that, especially in all of Mormon culture, you really need your anger. Like part of what I learned in therapy was that my anger was valid, that my anger was actually my boundary, like setting emotion and that I needed that, that my anger and my rage was actually helpful to me. It was my, it was my weapon to defend myself against abuse and mistreatment and seeing these women being told to just ignore those feelings when those feelings are, are screaming at them that there's something wrong, there's something wrong. And that anger and that jealousy is creating energy in your body to do something about it, which eventually they do. It sounds and the utter double standard in polygamy is really put on display here when Cody talks about the vulgarity of Mary having two husbands. Like, that's vulgar and gross, but a man having multiple wives is celestial and godly. Now, what's actually vulgar and gross is that standard. That's disgusting. And the fact that they spend basically their entire anniversary dinner 
arguing about a fourth wife is just evidence of the just the utter tragedy of that familial system. It was heartbreaking. I also think there was something really telling in Cody's basically refusal to admit that it was unfair, right? He's like, I'm not admitting that this is unfair because that'll take us down this path of questioning that will probably ultimately lead you out of the cult. But I think it's important to point out here that, that men also aren't choosing this, right? That it looks like from the outside that it benefits men and that men's are the one, but you gotta understand like in my family, this is a multi-generational thing right? We have been, my family's been Mormon for almost 200 years. So for almost 200 years, the women have been programmed a certain way and the men have been programmed a certain way. And so I get, I see a lot of comments on here when I talk about some of the dysfunction of like Cody's evil or Robin's evil or, or whatever. And while I recognize a lot of the dysfunction that is going on in their dynamic, and I can see the way that they're manipulating and, and being even abu abusive and exploitative, I really want to emphasize that I don't think that they're being evil. I think they're being dysfunctional and there's a really important difference. And that doesn't take away from the impact of that dysfunction, but I think it does create space for compassion, which is ultimately what we need in order to heal the dysfunction. And not only to heal the dysfunction, but also to recognize that everyone is complicit in that dysfunction, right? I, I really believe that Mary probably did present herself as being excited by Robin early on. She probably keeps sweet, right? Like you're not supposed to share those ugly emotions. So probably at the beginning, she was excited and she was presenting herself as like, oh, this is great. Like she would be such a great partner, blah, 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 blah. And so Cody probably is feeling blindsided and frustrated by these new emotions because they weren't presented when, when it was first happening right? Because the whole system of people are complicit in this dysfunctional system. And I guess if you take away anything from my reviews of these, uh, of these episodes, and as I'm getting further into the, the seasons, I just hope you understand that it isn't about the people. It's about the system, right? These are dysfunctional, multi-generational systems that have manipulated, contorted, and abused humans for over, like for centuries now, almost. And unless we really understand that and deal with and, and try to correct the system, we're just gonna keep spinning out, criticizing the people. And all of the people are victims of the system. Another example of this systemic problem is at the very end when Cody says this really chilling thing, which is, I haven't been told no yet in a strong enough fashion to believe it means no yet. And that is a horrifying statement, right? That is a horrifying statement, especially coming from a man in America. But it's part of a broader system of violating boundaries that exists in Mormon culture. Because in Mormon culture, there is no boundary that an individual can put to protect themselves that the system cannot override. Because in the system, certain people are in authority over you and represent God. And in the system, God can ask you to do anything, even if it violates your personal boundaries, even if it makes you feel gross and disgusting. In fact, sometimes, especially if it makes you feel gross and disgusting, like polygamy, because polygamy is supposed to be really hard. It's supposed to suck. That's why God created it so that it could wring all of the unrighteousness out of you. Just one example of this from Mormon scripture, the very first story in the Book of Mormon is the story of Nephi and Laban. And in that story, Laban is passed out drunk in an alleyway and a very young, like teenager Nephi is commanded by God to chop Laban's head off. And he says in the text, he's like, my spirit rebelled. I didn't want to do this, but I knew that I had to, right? That is a horrifying example of someone in authority overriding your feelings and your boundaries to get you to do something that you don't want to do. And that is the real problem in Mormon culture, not the people. 
the people need love and compassion and help.